Hi everyone, welcome to Dundas Dashboard How To Videos. This video is on post installation steps, emphasis on administration. It will demonstrate how to log into Dundas Dashboard application and create a new user. Now, let's get started. Let's open the Dundas Dashboard application. If you did not create a shortcut, you can always go to the Start Windows menu, All Programs, Dundas Data Visualization, pick the instance, and click Dundas Dashboard. Once it loads, you will see the login screen. The view may vary depending on the settings done in the configuration file. This particular view is the default view with no changes done. So here, you would want to enter your username and password. For the purpose of this video, please ensure the logging in user has the administrative privileges. Using the admin user that was created in the installation is an easy way to ensure that. Note, you can always reset the forgotten password of the admin by using the Reset Admin Password tool, which comes with the installation of Dundas Dashboard. So let's log in as the admin now. Once inside, navigate to the Administration tab, which is on the bottom left-hand side. Note, if the user that is logged in does not have the administrative privileges, they will not see this option. Since we logged in as the admin, we indeed have the administrative privileges. So let's click on this tab, and notice how all the options on top have changed. These are the options that the user with the administrative privileges has. The very top one is user accounts. This is where you can add, edit, or delete accounts. Security groups allows you to grant or deny privileges to all members of a group instead of having to configure the access rights for each user individually. In the projects, you're able to edit projects security. Shared resources contain all resources that allow for a more efficient way of designing dashboards. Unit Manager allows you to manage the unit definitions for the KPI measure values. Manage Project Items lets you search for items across the application instance and perform operations on them. Token Designer is where you can modify built-in tokens or create new ones. The Notification Manager is where you can edit the notifications. And lastly, the HTML Home setting is where you can configure various settings related to the HTML home screen. Now, let's create a new user. What you want to do is hover over User Accounts and click on the Libs button that will appear. Here, you can select what type of a user you want to create, whether it's local or Windows. In this example, let's create a local user. So let's click on Add Local User. Here, you'll see numerous tabs on the bottom with valuable information. By default, you start off with the General tab. The General tab contains the username, passwords, and type of privileges they are granted or denied. So let's assign those for our new user. Let's start off with a username. Give him a password. Confirm the password. The first name of our user. The last name of our user. Their email address. And here we can set the default language of our user, but let's keep it as English. And here, where all the privileges are, whether they're granted or denied. The privileges range from creating notifications to using the navigation ribbon. As mentioned earlier in the video, the user that is logging in should have the administrative privileges. To grant the administrative privileges for our user, it will be this one right here. In our case, let's deny it. Now, we're done with the Generals tab. So let's move on to the next one, which is roles. This is where you can assign a role to the user. 
whether it's a viewer, designer, or a developer. A viewer allows the user to view existing dashboards. A dashboard designer allows the user to create, edit, and delete dashboards. And finally, a dashboard developer that allows the user to work with the business objects. In our case, let's assign them as the dashboard developer. Let's save this user for now by clicking the Save button. Once we actually save, this is when the user will actually be created. You can tell the user has been created because their username will appear under User Accounts. What we did so far is the minimal requirement to successfully create a new user. Now, let's go over the other three tabs on the bottom just to show what they are. Groups containing this account shows what group this user belongs into. Project access rights shows the overall access level for each project. Custom attributes contains any attributes this user has. Now, just to ensure everything is working as expected, let's log in with our new user. So let's log out and put in the credentials of our new user. As you can see, we have logged in successfully. But note, since we denied the user with the administrative privileges, the user does not see the administration tab on the bottom left. For more information on what we discussed in this video can be found on our support site, support.dondas.com. Some key articles are shown on the screen now. Please feel free to visit them and read up on the information. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please visit our support site at support.dondas.com or contact us by email or by phone, which are shown on the screen. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming videos.